Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot of little questions by brands wanting to launch or sell their products in the EU or UK. Do I really need to register my product? And do I really need to comply with all of these regulations? I mean, how does a little brand keep up? Well, the short answer is yes, you do need to register your product on the Cosmetic Product Notification Portal. And yes, you do need to comply with all of the regulations, even if you're so small, all you're doing is selling to your neighbor. Now, in the EU, there is a very well-defined set of regulations that you must comply with. So this video, I'm going to take you through the various regulations that you need to comply with. We've got some great resource tools you can access from this video. And of course, we've got further training options so that you can learn to take care of your compliance requirements for yourself, even when you're a really small brand. Now, first of all, the EU definition of a cosmetic is along the lines of a product used to maintain or improve the condition or appearance of the skin or the hair. It obviously goes into a little bit more detail than that, but that's the overarching principle with which you need to comply. This means you cannot market your product for any sort of therapeutic, drug-like or physiological activity. So that's the very first and most important principle with your products, even when you're a really small brand. The EU regulations then go on to list out very specifically a rather large list of ingredients that your products cannot contain, as well as some very set limits on other ingredients it may contain up to and still be recognized as safe and suitable for cosmetic use. They also have really set limits over the use of UV filters, colorants, and preservatives. They also specifically prohibit any substances that may be carcinogenic, mutagenic, or toxic for reproductive activity. Now they also hold the brand putting the product onto the market as responsible for everything they say about that product in advertising, as well as the labels and claims, as well as what's actually in the product as well. So even if you're formulating your products and you think, hey, it's all okay because I'm using only natural and organic ingredients, these rules still apply to you. And there could be several rules that you don't realize you haven't checked and therefore may not be complying with and you didn't know. So please watch this video through, especially if you have an organic or natural brand, because there's some things you may not be aware of yet. And I'd like to give you advance notice before a regulator taps you on the shoulder and issues a product recall. When you sell a product in the EU, you must hold, or your responsible person must hold for you, what is known as a product information file. Your responsible person will also register your product on the cosmetic product notification portal, and that must also directly relate to what's in that product information file. Now the exact address and location of that product information file must also go on your label. And this is so that regulatory authorities can get in touch with either the responsible person, or if that's you, anytime there is any sort of issue related to a cosmetic product. That product information file must contain details about the product, everything that's in it with exact inputs, as well as technical data for each of those ingredients, showing quality and microbial limits have been checked, as well as statements about the method, and this must also comply with good manufacturing practice requirements. So if you're manufacturing for yourself, you need to learn how to comply with those good manufacturing practice requirements because it's one of the EU regulations you must adhere to. That product information file must also hold safety data and performance data to show the efficacy that supports the claims of your products. It must also hold the data to prove the shelf life or period after opening that you're claiming for your product. That's right, you must have stability data to support the shelf life for your product as part of your EU regulatory obligations. So one of the first things you need to do is you need to know how to search the COSING database to check for approvals, prohibitions, or limits on all of the ingredients that your formula contains. You must also check for any other regulatory conditions of use to make sure you're fully compliant. This EU database is also great to check your allergens, 
Did you know that your essential oils contain allergens and when they exceed certain limits, you need to list those allergens on your labels too. If you had someone have an allergic reaction to your product because it contains essential oils and you haven't listed those allergens, you have a safety and regulatory issue to the point of a product recall on your hands. So make sure you know how to search for those allergens and calculate the exact input that might be present in your product. Even if you're using natural and organic essential oils, you still need to make sure you comply. You need to know how to read all of your ingredient data sheets properly to make sure that you're listing out all components of every ingredient that's present in your product. It's not enough to just list the major component and it's definitely not okay to list a trade name of the material. You must use the correct spelling and presentation of all of your inky names for your ingredients and you must list every component of every ingredient in your ingredient list in descending order in using the correct terminology. So saying, oh, I didn't know, isn't sufficient to a regulator. If it's on your product label, they'll ask you to recall the product off of the market and fix the labels and you can't put it back out there until it's corrected. Again, this is a problem that a lot of small brands face simply because they didn't know any better. But if a regulator finds out, they'll make you pull the brand from the market, fix that label before you can return it. So save yourself the hassle and get it right in the first place. And there's some easy ways and great resources to help make sure you get them right every single time. This especially applies to plant materials. These are too often misquoted on labels and a source of misinformation and a regulatory issue. Again, if you get found by the regulators to have misused or misnamed an ingredient in your product, they will require you to remove that product from the marketplace until it's fixed. But you can overcome this easily by making sure you know how to search for the correct inky name of all of your botanical ingredients. Don't risk a non-compliance simply because you didn't know. It's quite easy to learn this and get it right every single time. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore because you'll be fully compliant and use the correct inky name for the particular botanical source that you are using. Even and especially if you are using natural and organic ingredients. There's a lot of other information that needs to fit on that label as well. Not only on the primary packaging, but also on the box it comes in. So make sure you have all required information on both the outer and the inner label or a leaflet if required. This includes, but is not limited to your company's address, your responsible person's address, the country of origin, that full ingredient list, even the weight or volume of your product must comply with the rules over whether volume or weight is required. Do you know the difference? Learn it, it's easy to do and easy to get it right with our checklists. You also need to make sure that all of your claims have appropriate evidence to support them. Now there's different levels of claims from marketing right through to clinical efficacy and there's different types of evidence required to support all of the different claims you make about your product. Your product information file needs to hold justifications and evidence for all of the claims you make about your product. And those claims must be compliant with the cosmetic regulations and definition. Be careful too of any links from other websites or even testimonials. Yes, they have to comply too. So make sure you get these small details right, especially when you start marketing your products online. Did you know there's also some really strict rules over free from claims and hypoallergenicity? So you can't claim that your product is free from SLS, pegs, parabens, and in many cases, fragrances or other ingredients. So make sure you know when a claim is okay to use and when it certainly is not. Again, these are things that regulators can pick you up on, especially as your brand grows. So get it right from the start so that you're always compliant and your brand can grow with confidence. And of course, you need to assemble all of this information into a readily usable document. And that is your product information file. Now, when you study our EU compliance workshops with us, you will get a template as well as loads of examples that show you how to complete each section 
including gathering safety information for your safety assessor to provide a final sign off. When you study this program with us, you can be your responsible person because you will be trained in how to be compliant with all of the necessary EU regulations. And we've got some great tools and checklists to help make sure you never make a silly mistake. There is quite a bit involved in being compliant with EU cosmetic regulations, but they do it to make sure consumers are safe and can trust the products they're purchasing. So make sure you are compliant with the EU cosmetic regulations from the minute you start selling to your friends, family and neighbours and grow your brand from there. Remember to contact us for our helpful guidelines and where you can go for further information and learning. I hope you found this video useful as an overview of what you need to do to be compliant with your cosmetic brand from the point you start selling that very first unit. Please give the video a thumbs up, please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!